Okay, today we're going to be making a video related to power equipment that you are going to utilize for your power equipment checkoff. So there are various different brands of power equipment out there. The versions we have here at the school are made by Stryker, which is a very common manufacturer of power equipment that we utilize in the OR, but there are other brands such as ConMed and some of the other companies that are out there. So in general, this is going to give you the basics of how power equipment functions, but make sure that you familiarize yourself with the items that you have available at your facility as well. After viewing this video, be sure to complete the power equipment checkoff and upload that to the Canvas Dropbox. All right, to start out with, we have learned that there are various different sources of power for our power equipment. So we have batteries, we have electricity, and we have compressed nitrogen. So the versions I'm going to show here, here today in this video are going to be battery operated and also what we plug into the electric box, which is going to be referred to as either a core or sometimes a core TPS. So first we'll start off with our battery operated power. So we generally have a large power, which oftentimes is referred to as a system eight or a system seven, depending on which version your hospital has. But in general, these are going to be your large pieces of power equipment that are utilized for some of our larger cases, such as total joints, big hip fractures, um, sometimes big calcaneal cases, things where we need a lot of power in order to drive screws into large bones or create holes um, or saws or various different creation of shapes, depending on the type of procedure that's being performed. So first thing we're going to talk about is this is the battery. Batteries um, only last a certain amount of time. Obviously, the sterilization process is going to decrease their life, but dropping them decreases their life as well. So we need to make sure that we take care of them. And so when we load the battery, the battery is going to go on the bottom of the piece of the power equipment. So it just slides on in general onto this large power. And then to take it off, you're just going to push this button and then it'll slide off. So when we're done with the case, we send these to sterile processing, of course, and then they are going to go on a charger. And then once they're charged, after they've been decontaminated, which we would never submerse them in water, they're gonna be cleaned and wiped down and then blown dry. We put them in the charger. Once they're charged, then they'll be wrapped and they'll be sterilized and then they come back into circulation. But you never know how long a battery has been sitting around. And so you always wanna make sure that you test it once you get it on the field. But there's going to be a proper sequence to adding power to your handpiece because if I add power and then I'm attempting to load a blade, which is sharp, then I could potentially cut myself. So the power is always the last thing that we add because then we create a safe way for us to be able to load and unload the blades and also the sharp drill bits would could potentially injure us as we are going through that process. So once I have the power on though, and I have it loaded, I wanna make sure I test it. And I always wanna make sure I point it away from the field and from anyone that is a part of the team so that I don't accidentally have the blade or the drill bit go flying someplace. And then when I take it off at the end, again, I push down and then pull that off. Okay, so that's how that battery loads onto that hand piece. Uh, in general, batteries are universal for a specific type of power equipment, okay? So you're going to have large batteries for large power, and then you'll have kind of smaller batteries for the medium-sized power, which is generally referred to as a 4400 or a 4300, depending on what version of that medium power you have. That middle power, that middle size of power is utilized for cases like ACLs, uh, wrist fractures, kind of that middle of the road. And then we have small power, which generally is going to be the core or the TPS, which is going to be plugged into an electric box in order to have its power source. And then most frequently we see nitrogen powered items being the things that we utilize in neurosurgery. All right, we have various different attachments that go on to our hand pieces, okay? So our universal hand piece is what is going to house our drills, our reamers, and also what we call our pin collets and wire collets. So it's just a general hand piece that has all different attachments that can go into it. So I have two different attachments that look like this. One is called a pin collet and one is called a wire collet. And if you look really closely at the side, you can see where that's written. And it also tells you, if I turn it around, what size of wires or pins fit into those collets, okay? So collet is just a name 
for kind of a trigger type looking mechanism that is cannulated that has a hole in it that those wires are going to pass through. And I will pick one or the other based on the diameter of the wire that I'm inserting. So if you look at these two, you can see that over here, I have what we call as a K wire and it has a much smaller diameter. Where over here, I have what we call as a Steinman pin and it has a much larger diameter. So in general, wires are smaller in diameter and pins are larger in diameter. And so I use a wire collet for wires and I use a pin collet for pins. And so when I insert that into my handpiece, I go ahead and place my pin collet in, and then I could go ahead and insert my Steinman pin, okay, which is a larger diameter. I leave enough length here, and then I would add on my battery source. And then when I hand it to my surgeon, I don't have to compress this trigger here. Inside, there's kind of an expanding piece that's gonna hold that in place. And then I would hand it up to the surgeon with my hand over the top like this, and then hand it to them to function. When they are going to drive the pin in, they clamp down on this trigger, and then that's what's going to grasp onto that pin and then allow it to be driven into the bone. Okay, and then they will hand it back to us like this empty. Of course, if they've put the pin in already or if they're removing the pin, they can grasp onto that and then activate the power and then that will pull that pin out of the bone. So that's a pin call it. Okay. Wire call it is basically the same. It's just a smaller diameter. So it feeds on the same. I would put my wire in the cannula here. Okay. I would add my power source. Again, I'm going to hand it to my surgeon like this so that it's ready to go, making sure I keep the pointy portion away from my gown so it's not going to get caught and cause a contamination. They would take and they're going to compress that trigger as they drive it into the bone. And then they will hand it back to us. We would take that power source off and then further unload our attachment. Now your attachments, depending on your version of your handpiece, there may be a button or a piece that you push in order to pull that attachment off. That's very common with various different types of handpieces. So always look for a button or something that you kind of move at the side and that will allow you to pull your attachments off. We always pull back on our attachments and our drill bits or anything that we load in a saw blade in order to make sure it's actually seated so that it's not going to be loose and not work correctly for our surgeon. So that's your wire collet and your pin collet. In general, pins are larger than wires and we know which one to use based on the diameter of the item that we need to place inside. Okay. All right, next we're going to talk about our drills and reamers, okay? So in general, remember the difference between a drill and a reamer is that a drill spins faster with not as much torque. And a reamer spins slower, but it has more power as it spins. And I always describe that as the drill is like the red hot sports car that takes off at a red light. Whereas the reamer is more like the F-150 pickup. That's gonna be able to pull a lot more, but it's gonna take it longer to get going. And so we use drills generally when we're creating small holes that I want something to spin fast and go through. But I use a reamer when I'm trying to core something out, possibly the intramedullary canal or the acetabulum, something where I need more power so that with every turn, I am going to be taking more bone away and it's a significantly larger area. So that's kind of the difference between drills and reamers. Now, it depends on what version you have, but in some of our older attachments, things were actually color coded where you had different attachments based on if you had a drill or a reamer. Drills were blue and reamers were red. And we always remembered that as R for red, R for reamer. So when I was doing things where I wanted more torque, I make sure I pick a reamer piece. And then for drills, then I pick the one that was blue. So this is a Jacobs chuck and key. So when we chuck up things, we're gonna have drill bits that are round at the end. There is no flat section. Whereas when you look at this one, you can see that there's a flat section. So when you have a drill bit or anything that you were attempting to load that has a flat section, we place that in what we call as a quick connect, not in a Jacobs chuck and key. One that is round on the end, we're going to chuck up. And so on the Jacobs chuck and key, we're going to hold one section and spin the other section. And as you, you can see, as I spin that, 
then it makes my opening at the top smaller or larger, depending on which direction I spin it. Obviously, righty tighty, lefty loosey. And so I want to compress that down and then insert my drill bit, okay, and then hand tighten it as much as I possibly can so that now it's seated in there. And then I'm going to take my key, which looks like this. So this is the Jacob's Chuck. This is the key. And I'm going to hand tighten it on at least two opposite holes. Okay, so I tighten it on one and then I go to another one. And then I always want to pull back on it to make sure it's actually seated. Okay, if you do have the drill bit that has the flat section, we're going to utilize what we call as our quick connect. So our quick connect looks like this. It has a collar that pulls back. And so what you're going to do is pull back that collar, insert the drill bit until it seats, and then let the collar go forward. Pull back on your drill bit and make sure it's actually loaded. The way we unload it then is just simply pulling back on the collar and then the drill bit will pull out. Okay, so again, pull back on the collar, insert it until it seats down, let go of the collar, pull back to make sure it's seated and then pull back on the collar to unload it. Okay, once we have our drill bit loaded, either in our quick connect or in our Jacob's check and key, then we would go ahead and load that onto our hand piece. So we're gonna go ahead and insert that here, okay? And then we would put our battery on and we wanna make sure that we test it, okay? So again, when we test it, we wanna make sure that we point it away from the field or away from anybody else, but always point it down that way, should the drill bit come dislodged, it's not going to go flying at somebody and hurt them. Okay, so we have that. Again, if you want to change, of course, you would take your power source off and then push this button and pull it off and you could switch it out for your other drill bit that you've loaded in your Jacobs Chuck. Okay, again, I would add my power so source, test it, and then hand it up to my surgeon the same way that we were holding on to our pin collet and wire collet take off my power source, and then take off my drill bit. Now, in some of the newer versions, like this is a System 7, so you can see here that I actually have the ability in the same handpiece to switch from ream to drill. It's not in the attachments, it's actually in the handpiece itself. And so we just have one universal attachment that's going to be utilized for both drill and ream. And this is actually what they call is a locking keyless chuck. And so on this one, if I wanted to chuck something up, I don't necessarily need a key to tighten it down. And so I just take again and I'm gonna spin until it gets smaller so that it actually grasps onto that drill bit that I've loaded inside there, okay? And I, then you can hear it click as it tightens down. Okay, so it untightens and then once it tightens, now it's locked. And you can see that now you can see that arrow is pointing to the lock on the side there. And again, I'm always gonna pull back on my drill bit and make sure it's locked. But then that piece just fits into the hand piece here. Okay, I would pick if my surgeon wants drill or ream, depending on what we're doing. Okay, for this, this is a drill bit, so I'm gonna pick drill. And then I would go ahead and attach my battery. Now in the middle, you're going to have a safety. Okay. So this also means if I want my power to only go forward, or if I want to have the ability to go forward and backward with the buttons that are here, depending on what I, how I have this set. So when I have this pushed out, I have the ability to go forward and I have the ability to go backward. Okay. In the middle is your safety. So when it's on safety, when I push these, I don't get any power whatsoever, okay? And then if I have it pushed to the other side, then I only have the ability to go forward. When I push this button, it doesn't do anything, okay? So your surgeons may like various different settings here. In general, they usually like forward and back when we hand it up. But when we're gonna test it, make sure you take it off of safety. Again, you're gonna point it away from the field and point it down and make sure that your battery is actually working, okay? When we hand it to the field, you're gonna hand it up here and then hand it to function to your surgeon so that they're ready to use it, holding onto the top, making sure that the drill bit's not gonna poke you in the arm. When you get it back and you wanna unload it, remember we always wanna take the power off first so that we're not gonna hurt ourselves. 
And then on this one, to take this piece off, you're gonna pull back on this collar right here and then the piece comes out, okay? It loads by just pushing it in. And then to take it off, you're gonna pull back on this collar and then pull the whole piece out. Okay, so that's how we load our Jacob's Chuck and Key, our Quick Connect. That's also how we hand that. And then that's the proper sequence for getting those things ready. Okay, so I would load my drill bit into my attachment, go ahead and put my attachment on my hand piece. I'm gonna go ahead and load my power source. I'm going to make sure it's off safe, safety and test it away from the field. And then I am ready to hand it up to my surgeon. Okay, then when it comes back to me, proper sequence for unloading is take the power source off first, go ahead and pull off the attachment. And then to get my drill bit out of my attachment, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that. Either it's the keyless chuck or use a key to untwist it. Or if you have the quick connect, you're gonna pull back on the collar and pull that drill bit off. Okay, so that's all of those attachments with the universal handpiece and also the, uh, the reamer and the drill. All right, next we're gonna talk about the various different saws that we have available. So in large power, we have reciprocating saws and sagittal saws. Remember that sagittal saws come straight off the end of the saw and they're gonna cut in a horizontal direction like this, okay? And this is what your saw blades are gonna look like. May not necessarily have the holes in them, may be completely, uh, completely full here, but they're gonna look like this. Where your recip saw oftentimes has a cutting edge, sometimes on both sides, it may just be on the bottom edge here. But when we load that into the blade, it's gonna cut this direction. Kind of like if you think about the electric knife that you use when you cut your turkey at Thanksgiving, okay? Sagittal cuts this way, reciprocating cuts this way back and forth like this, sagittal cuts this direction horizontal, okay? So when we load those, this is the system seven, Okay, on this one, you can see here, it has an unlock. Okay, so I wanna have that in the unlock. I would go ahead and insert my blade in here. And if you look at the blade, it has a place where it says full insert. So I, when I push that in, I wanna make sure it's fully inserted. And then I take and I switch this to where it has lock, okay? So, and then I pull back on the blade to make sure it's actually in the hand piece. Then I would load my power. And again, you're gonna have a safety in the middle. So make sure that you have that off of safe. You're then gonna point it away from the field and test it to make sure that it works. When I hand it to my surgeon, again, I'm gonna hold over the top and place it into the hand of my surgeon. When I get it back, I'm gonna take the, if I wanna disassemble it, I take the power source off. And then to take the blade off, you're gonna switch here back to unlock and then you'll be able to pull the blade off. Okay, so that's our sagittal saw. Now the older version, okay, may, that you may see out there has a button at the top, okay? So you push that down, you're gonna insert the blade and then let go of the button and pull back, okay? That one, of course, I would add the power and then hand that up to the field, comes back to me. I pull the power off to pull the blade off. You're gonna push down on the button and pull that blade out. So that's our sagittal saw. For our reciprocating saw on this one, you can see at the end here, there's a little X, okay? So this has a piece that twists and you can see that when I twist it, now the edges of that X are all lined up. And so that will allow me to insert the blade uh, either vertical or horizontal, but most frequently we're gonna insert it vertical. And so I twist that and then I can take and I can insert my blade in here, okay? And then it twists down, okay? So then I pull back on my blade, obviously being careful not to cut myself, but making sure that my blade is actually seated. Then I'm gonna add my power Okay, again, make sure that you take your safety off. You're gonna point it away from the field, test it and make sure your battery source works. Then you would hand it up to the surgeon. And then when they hand it back to you, you're gonna pull the power off. And then we take the blade off by again, twisting that tip. And then I'll be able to pull the blade out. Okay. 
So the older versions function exactly the same way. So the biggest thing to remember is just making sure that you're going to spin that tip there to be able to insert that blade, making sure there's no power on it while you are adding your reciprocating blade, just like all the other items that we've talked about. Test it and then hand it up to the field. And then when you're ready to disassemble, make sure you take the battery off first and then you can pull the blade out. All right, so that's all of our large power. So let's talk about smaller corded power where the source of power and function comes from a box, an electrical box, which is generally referred to as a core or a TPS. Now, this case is very frequently seen in the clinical sites, okay, for a lot of our power equipment. And so on this, the way that you get that open is there are usually handles on the side that are up like this when it's ChemGuard wrapped. You're gonna go ahead and flip those out. And then the, the lid at the top has handles that you push in and then the lid picks up, okay? So you're gonna push those in and pick the lid up. Just like when we talked about the small fragment set, oftentimes these trays have multiple layers. So on each layer, you are going to have a chemical indicator that needs to be verified. All of those indicators have to be good in order for you to utilize the set. So make sure that you check each of the layers and pull those trays out that you're going to be utilizing. All right, so in the small power, you're gonna have a cord that looks like this. And oftentimes you're gonna have multiple cords and the cords are universal. They plug into all the hand pieces, okay? The black end is the end that stays on. The silver is the end that gets handed off the field. And if you take a look at this black end, you see that there is an arrow so that arrow plugs into the hand pieces where they have an arrow. And if you take a look at that, you can kind of see it has a flat section there. So if you look at the end here, you can see that there's a flat section right where that arrow is. And that's how that cord fits in, okay? When we wanna take it off, there's a little collar right here that you pull back on and then the cord comes off of that hand piece or whatever it's been attached to, okay? So again, the black is the end we keep, the silver is the end that we hand off to the circulator that they're gonna plug into the box. And then when we wanna switch the cord between hand pieces, you pull back on this collar and then the cord comes out. Now, each of these smaller hand pieces have the ability to have a hand control added to them. So the hand control looks like this. The hand control also has an arrow on it here. So when we load that, we wanna match the arrows up and then that hand piece loads from the bottom. And there's also a dot on the hand piece and there's a dot here. So you see the, the two dots. I wanna make sure that those are loaded and lined up on top of each other and then it sits down flush. And that way I am still able to put the cord on with that hand piece on. And then on that hand piece, you're seeing that it has a safe and it has run, okay? So on safe, which is how we wanna have it when the surgeon's not using it at us up on the field, it's a safety. If I push this down, it's not gonna be activated. The surgeon, when they're ready to use it, will switch it to run and then put it back to safe when it's sitting up at the field. And these also, these, uh, these hand pieces here have the ability to extend if your surgeon needs more length as they are utilizing that item, okay? All right, so this piece that I happen to have here is an additional saw that is available in the small power, which is called an oscillating saw. So the oscillating saw, so we said the sagittal saw comes straight off the end, okay? So in the small power, the sagittal saw looks like this. You're gonna have smaller saw blades that look like this, okay? They're gonna have cutouts at the top. And when we load that sagittal saw for the small power, you push down on the button, and then this blade is gonna insert into, if you take a look at, so it, as I push that down, at the very, very bottom, you can see that there's a slot where then I can insert that blade, and then I let go, and then it has little teeth on the inside that are gonna compress down and now my sagittal saw is loaded. So you see it comes straight off the end of that saw. And so my surgeon would utilize that. I would add the hand piece and then have the cord as well. So to unload the blade, you're gonna push down and then pull that off. 
for the oscillating saw, the blade is gonna come off at a right angle. So it still cuts in the same direction that the, the sagittal saw did. But on this one, what we do is we push up on this collar and that's how I get those little slits. And then I'm going to insert my blade and then let the collar go down. So you can see my blade comes off at a right angle. So instead of coming straight off the end and cutting like this, it's bent at an angle and it's like a fan that oscillates back and forth. And so this is nice if the surgeon is attempting to make a cut where they're going straight down like this and cut, instead of coming straight out like that sagittal saw was before. But it's the same blade that I load into the sagittal saw and also into the oscillating saw. So to take that off, I push up on the collar and then that blade is gonna come out. All right. So in the small power, I also have what we call our burrs that we frequently use. Okay, and so those, you have a hand piece that looks like this. And sometimes there are various different lengths of the attachments that go on here. They may be angled, they may be straight. And so burrs tend to be like small round balls that spin really fast that shave off bone or possibly create holes or shape it to be a certain shape. And so when we load these burrs, which come in all different types of sizes, they may be round, they may be oval, they may be egg shaped. It just kind of depends on what you're attempting to do. But the way we load them is on the side here, you can see I have run and I have load. And you see a little dot here with this collar. So when I want to load and place my burr in, I want to make sure that dot is lined up with load. I'm going to insert my burr until it seats all the way down. Okay. Then I go ahead and switch my collar from load to run. So I twist that and then I pull back on my burr and make sure it's actually seated in there and then it's ready to go. I would add on my hand piece if my surgeon utilizes hand control because they can use foot control with a foot pedal as well. So remember I line that up with my dot to dot and also my arrow to arrow and then I would have my cord which is going to go on as well and then my surgeon would utilize that burr to remove the bone or create the hole, whatever they're trying to do with that, okay? To disassemble, I pull back on the collar, pull the cord off, pull my hand piece off to get the burr out. I'm going to switch it back from run, back to load, and then I'll be able to remove that burr from the end. And then this piece just pulls off. There's no locking mechanism whatsoever with that one, okay? On this, you do have a recip saw as well. So there are tiny recip blades that can go inside there that load um, simply by pushing down on this button and then the saw blade will fit in there. And then you also will have a small hand piece, similar to the large hand pieces that we talked about before. So these will have wire collets and pin collets, just like we talked about. So they load in and then they unload by pushing this button on the side, which will allow them to come apart. Okay. And then you also are going to have quick connects and Chuck's, Jacob's chuck and keys that function exactly the same as the other items that we've talked about. And we'll just load into the universal driver like this with your various different drill bits that can fit inside by pulling that collar back. And then these function of course, by then attaching that cord to them that would then be plugged into the box. And then they have, again, it's telling you safety forward and forward and reverse, depending on where this is positioned here. Okay. All right, so that's an, uh, just kind of an overview of your various different power equipment. Make sure you complete the power equipment checkoff and upload that to the Dropbox.